Welcome back to the Farmer to Farmer 5 live stream. I'm back at the desk. We let Zach Johnson go. Uh, he's actually going to be on a YouTube panel right now. Just tune back in for that. But uh, for now, we are up here with some folks who are very involved in the organics industry. Excited to have a conversation. Can we just start out by, why don't you guys introduce yourselves a little bit? Yeah, so uh, I'm JP Ray. Um, we farm uh, 10,000 acres organic uh, just north of Omaha here. Um, and I was also co founder of AgriSecure, um, which is an advisory service to help other farmers uh, figure out how to get started into uh, organics. Uh, my name is Travis Hyde. Uh, we're from Waldron, Saskatchewan, up in Canada. Um, we've got a, an organic farm that we've kind of began the transa transition in 2015. Um, we're 75, almost 100% certified. Um, as we keep adding land, we keep delaying that sort of, we're all certified sort of day, but it's coming. So, so yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, R Rusty Olson. I farm up in Northern Iowa. Uh, farm about 2,000 acres and uh, got introduced to uh, JP through uh, FBN last, uh, over a year ago, I guess, no. And, no, last year, last year. Anyway. Uh, was interested in uh, looking at organics, and I did not know about AgriSecure till I met these guys, and uh, it was kind of a perfect conduit to help me move into what I wanted to do with transition into organics, and uh, uh, it's been a good, good process so far. Great people to work with. So, absolutely. I want to start down with JP. Talk to us a little bit about why you started AgriSecure. What what was the kind of need there, and, and how where where is the company now? Yeah, so when uh, I, I get this question a lot because a lot of people say, like, you're an organic farmer, why did you start advising other farmers, uh, you know, to uh, help them out? And a lot of it is because um, we can operate as a network and add a lot of, uh, um, if we can add more farmers in our network and into our systems, we can gain a lot of value working together. Um, a great example of that is, is that today from our record keeping system, um, we went over some data with our clients around planting dates and the impact on yield relative to um, you know, the, 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 and, and profitability ultimately. And the really cool thing is, is that that, dat, that data set doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. And so by working with other guys, we can, we can help create some of that stuff so we can all get better and, and serve a market that is growing pretty rapidly. So um, we just think that when you're looking at organics, it's a tremendously difficult thing to get your arms around all the information. And we, uh, we like to think of ourselves a little bit as like the, uh, the bumper rails and the bowling for the kids' bowling. So we keep you out of the gutters. Absolutely. So. <laughs> I think a lot of farmers who I've talked to who are interested in organic agriculture, yeah, it's, it's that point that's out in the future of like there's, there's higher prices, there's added value out there, but there's a quagmire between here and there and I, and I don't know what's in there and the uncertainty is just a huge barrier. Could you guys talk about how you thought about that before you started the transition and, and what it actually, like, what did you think was out there and then what actually was out there? <laughs> well, I, if, you, uh, if you allow me, um, the one thing that you, you hear about when you talk about organics is all you're going to have is weeds and you're not going to get any yield. And um, of course, me being conventional agriculture for years, I, I, I kind of fell into that same uh, 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 same mindset, if you will. And after looking at the, the the financial aspect of it and the profitability that is potential in organics, I started thinking, well, maybe there's something to this. And meeting with these guys and starting to see some actual yield data and and what what it takes to make that happen. Um, there, it, it gets you past that mindset that you know this is you know th th this is just a, a, a bad deal and it's, it's going to be a disaster. And uh, actually talking to people that, uh, uh, that that have been involved in it and been successful in it, 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 it helped me uh, get more confident in the ability to do it. I guess so. Yeah, yeah we uh, we kind of you know I grew up on a very uh, very strong conventional progressive farm. Um, my dad started it from scratch when I was born and, and uh, the only way he could compete was by being different, differentiating himself. Um, and then, you know, our family sold the farm. We went and did a number of other things and kind of came back into agriculture about eight years later, you know, after I was over in Africa helping start a farm and that sort of reef uh, stoked the fire and the passion for farming again. But I couldn't believe how expensive the tractors were when, when I first, you know, heard about that, how much the land had gone up in price, and just the overall cost of farming has just really 
gotten out of hand. And, uh, you know, for me to kind of start a farm from scratch, we had to figure out how to really control our costs. And that was sort of the opportunity around organic. You know, somebody told me $37 a bushel for organic flax. That's Canadian dollars, so that's a lot <laughs> less than American dollars. But, but, you know, that, you know, I was like, well, I think I can get to a four or $500 revenue there. And my cost is going to be substantially less because I'm eliminating the chemical costs and the fertilizer costs, much of like what a lot of the FBN conversation has been around is controlling the costs. You know, so I think, you know, those were some of the reasoning and the rationale that sort of put us on that course. You know, it was kind of by accident and it was through disadvantage because we didn't have paid for land, paid for machinery, you know, so essentially we had to try to find other ways to cut costs. And, you know, removal of inputs was one of them. But we are seeing there is definitely going to be the requirement to figure out how to find the right amendments to add back into the system because you can't grow all the fertility, you know, so. Absolutely. Rusty, I want to pick up on something you said because that's actually what I hear from a lot of farmers when I talk about organic and whether they've considered organic a lot. I think more far farmers than want to admit say things like, I, I don't know what my neighbors would think, or I, I don't want to, I, I don't know, like no one around here does that, so like I can't do it. Could you guys talk a little bit about, and maybe bring in the network aspect of that, how do you move past kind of the expectations or the misperceptions, misconceptions around organic, and, and how does having a network of farmers who have already done it to fall back on and to kind of gauge with, how does that, how did that affect your journey? I, I can tell you that my, over time, not just in pertaining to the agriculture or the organics, uh, my life got a lot better when I quit worrying what everybody thought about what I did. And that was a milestone for me. And uh, in this situation, yes, uh, I've had a lot of uh, flack from the community. They think I'm crazy. And we just don't have it in our area. In a couple counties over, there's quite a bit of it. And there's some very good organic farmers, and there's the organic farmers that are trying to farm organically conventionally. And that's, they're the ones that are making the mistakes. And that's Unpack that a little bit. What does that mean? Okay, so JP knows what I'm talking about. These, <laughs> these guys that want to raise corn and soybeans, sell them for organic prices, but not do anything else other than raise corn and soybeans. So they're basically trying to farm organically, conventionally, without adding in a rotation of cover crops and a rotation of solid seed stands, oats, alfalfa, uh, peas. I mean, what were we talking about the other day? What were they trying to uh, just there's a lot of different options of, of crops that you need to roll in the rotation to control the weeds and con and, and, and build soil health and soil health is everything so You're, go ahead oh no i was just going to say that like one thing that people say is, is that uh, about organic stuff for time is you don't have any tools in the toolbox um, because you don't have roundup you don't have uh you know like a really easy nitrogen to put on and I, and I disagree with that because i just think your tools are different your tools are crop rotation your tools are you know not relying completely on monocultures and they're you know things like that but we have to go back and manage things um, biologically in, an, in an, a systems approach rather than you know just uh, doing corn and soybeans and just taking out the technology I mean like that's that's not a sustainable organic system long term well so. and we've we've jumped on a lot of intercropping mm -hmm. you know kind of over the last three years where we'll do a cereal with a legume uh, oil seed with a legume to create um, diverse competition to be fixing nitrogen while we're drawing on nitrogen out of the soil just to try to really sort of build on this sustainability piece of how how do we sort of eliminate you know the perceived fallow from the past you know and find ways to be profitable within each season and within, within each crop um, and there's definitely challenges to it I mean we got snowed on three times before we got a crop off this year you know uh, when you're growing covers while you're growing your other cross, crops and they're small grains and you gotta go right on the ground to get them, when all of a sudden rains delay harvest and the green starts to grow more, things get more challenging. You know, so we are really seeing, you know, there was a lot of underestimated time that goes into organic farming, you know, compared to a conventional system that's more of a prescription-based system, right? It takes a lot more management and unique management and then just a time commitment, I think, right across the board. The, but the return, the, the really neat thing is that in the organics, your returns to really good management are much, much higher. Like you have the potential to achieve that. Now, 
back a little bit to your earlier question, if it's important for you to go to your coffee shop and talk about your clean fields all the time, organics might not be for you. Um, not because it's always a mess, but there's going to be situations where a field gets away from you from time to time. Um, but it, again, in the aggregate, like our best corn um, does is the be just as well as the conventional, and you can't tell it apart when you drive down the road from, from you know, from conventional crops. And, you know, so I think that, but at the same time, you have to be a little bit open-minded that sometimes things aren't gonna work out just the way that you want. Um, but in the end, you're gonna be much better off. My cousin put a Pheasants Forever uh, Habitat sign in my soybeans one year. Um, and they were not particularly good that year. But, uh, you know, uh, so, so I think that's something that has to do with it. Organics isn't for everybody. Um, you have to be kind of uh, willing to kind of fail forward, as yeah, Travis likes yeah, to say. Because um, we don't have it all figured out. But the neat thing is, is that the margins are such that you can make some mistakes and still be okay. So. And working with a network like uh, AgriSecure, at least you've got some guys who say, can you try that let me know how it turns out? Yeah. Well, and we're not alone either. Just kidding. No, yeah. no, but, but really, we're not alone. I, I like that because, like, you know, there are days that it's tough and, and there's ambiguity and you don't know how to do it. And when you have, like, a network of people that you can talk to to help figure things out, it's great. I mean, it's, it's just, it really makes it a lot easier. It's a tough journey when... Everybody makes fun of you for what you <laughs> Yeah, I can only imagine. Well, and unpack fail forward for me because I don't hear a lot of farmers who are proud to say, like, I fail a lot. That's, well, that's what I'm doing. I mean, I, I, my dad had the same kind of, he said, if you're not changing, you're going backwards. So if you're not going forward, somebody else is. So technically, you're going backwards. You know, so he said, if you're not learning every crop, every season, I mean, we really only have so many in our livelihood as a farmer. And, uh, you know, so if you're not taking chances to try to learn what will work and could work better and almost kind of being your own worst critic, then you're not going to be prepared, I think, for, you know, the future of where we're going to be asked to go with agriculture. And, and, and actually, I heard it first. I read a book called Failing Forward by um, John Maxwell. You know, and that was, that was some great advice because what it did is it, it sort of proved that we got to celebrate failure because celebrating failure is what progresses humanity, you know, it progresses people. We grow, you know, you think of the gym, when you tear muscle, it grows, you know, so essentially I feel like that's our opportunity, especially as young farmers trying to just make our stake and, and have a chance to kind of farm in the future. We're gonna have to be stronger than the guys that are older than us that have paid for land, paid for machinery, and a lot of substantial advantages over us. And 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 I think like, you know, what we've learned is Mother Nature's creative and crafty. You know, and, and literally that fight against those weeds isn't going away. You know, and, and, and yet there's consumers that are demanding something different, you know, as far as a product for their food and and I think like that's the tremendous opportunity is if we kind of put our ear, you know, to the consumer and then we just try to work backwards to figure out what they want to see happen and figure out what we can learn from, you know, whether it's my father or my grandfather. When I was in South Sudan, they had plows there, you know, and I was the guy brought over there to help teach them how to farm. And I called my dad. I'm like, how do you use a plow? Like, cause I'm from Saskatchewan, small grains. I mean, we direct seeded everything. And, and so dad said, well, I'm gonna have to call grandpa, you know? So he didn't even know, you know, and that's how things change. But, you know, is everything from the past necessarily all bad? I don't think so, you know? So I think what we've got to do is sort of honor from the past, yeah. the tact, the, 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 and, 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 and adapt it maybe for your farm, your situation, you know, um, and the market that you're aspiring to satisfy. Well, the, the technology is there to use some tools from the past to make them efficient to the yeah. future. I yeah. mean, with the RTK ability and, and, and the row crop portion of the uh, uh, organic cropping, it, everything's straight and easy to, it makes it so much more efficient to cultivate. Well, the, the first time that I saw a weed burner, I thought, oh, that's a really clever innovation. And then I did a little more homework on it and found that they used to use them all the time yeah. back in the 50s. Yep. <laughs> so yep. sometimes yep. it's reaching then, back to the past. And then to, uh, got released. And they yeah. Yeah, exactly. Not, not as much need for it anymore. So um, I think an important thing, too, that, uh, you know, for me personally, like I'll, I'm very honest about it. At the very beginning, I got into it because of the economics. Um, and that was it. Um, we, we had some people asking us for organic hay and they were willing to pay a whole lot more. 
and uh, we just thought, oh, okay, all right, we'll try this organic thing. Um, but over time, like what we've recognized is like how important um, soil management is. And I think that, that the way that we treat soil as farmers today, um, I think it's got a lot of challenges. Um, what, what we've seen since we switched organic is a bit much bigger return to biology happening in the soil. We don't need the amount of nutrients, you know, as Travis was talking, when you have crop rotations, but also just when you stop putting on the acidic fertilizers and, and all the salt-based chem, um, you, get, you get the biology going in the soil again, and you can actually manufacture a lot more of the nutrients that you have in there and, and improving soil tilth and things like that. So um, I'm not, uh, I didn't start off that way, but I'm becoming much more of a believer in, uh, in, in some of the principles behind organic systems. And, and regenerative agriculture in general, you know, there's a, a large push for cover crops. And uh, it, it, so and, and I applaud people that do that, but then it just floors me that they're, they're doing all this and then they're going and killing the stuff and Roundup in the spring and just taking away everything they just did that was positive for the soil so there's there's pluses and minuses in every operation sure. and every style of agriculture and mm. what we're doing is just trying to find the best suitable practice for our operation and make it profitable you cannot be prosperous without profit and you cannot be profitable without being prosperous it just and they have to go hand in hand well, so. so are there times when I would like to do a little bit less tillage um, sure but they pay us three times <laughs> the price for the corn. So, you know, and, and I think uh, everything has to be in balance. And, and just trying to focus on regeneration without any economics behind it is, is it's, any system that's going to be sustainable, it's got to be economically sustainable first. Well, and that's, I think that's been sort of the biggest thing that drew us into organics is, you know, let's just increase the value of what we grow. And, and even a lot of what, you know, was talked about earlier today by Charles. I was I was in the back of one of those talks. Let's look at margin instead of bushels. You know, I, I think we're 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 just in agriculture right straight across the board. We've got to we got to stop trying to just grow bushels and grow profitability and stop trying to feed the world and feed our family. You know, by looking after sort of the the margin and the profit of the farm, and then and then let's go a step further and look after feeding our communities and. You know, what can be done locally that can benefit sort of our community that's dying and our community that's getting smaller. And we're seeing all those incredible impacts. You know, we're, we're bringing young kids back into the schools because there's new people coming to work on our farm. There's, you know, we're, 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 we're bringing back tillage companies that manufactured cultivator shovels. And, you know, and all of a sudden they're like, where's all these orders coming from? Because because it's parts and stuff that was manufactured locally, you know, and, and it just starts to create this leaky bucket that drops right here at home, you know, and just plants more of the dollars in, in the people's pockets around us. And that's, I think, the hopeful story of what we're seeing. It comes with all kinds of challenges. It comes with all kinds of pushback in your local community. I mean, what we're doing is disruptive, you know, it's different. You know, and, and just people are afraid of change. And I actually acknowledge and understand that because I too, you know, fought and, you know, fought it myself until I realized this makes so much sense. And you start to convince yourself by doing it, you know, in small ways to begin with. But I'm a big way kind of guy. If I'm going to take a chance, I'm going to go all in. I'm not going to sit on the fence, you know, and that's what we've done in this sort of failing forward sort of mentality is we just... Whatever the new problem that arises will be up for the challenge. You know? Absolutely. Let me get one last eventuality that I hear a lot from farmers in front of you guys. 2019 was not a great year. Came on the heels of a lot of other not so great years. 2020 doesn't look to be a particularly much better year. And I think a lot of farmers look at organic, they hear what you're saying, they've seen some results, maybe they know some people who have done it, but they say, you know, there's so much risk right now, it's not the time. It's not the time for me to try something new, it's not the time for time for me to experiment or explore, it's the time to sit back and just try to play defense. Mm -hmm. What's your response? Sit back and slowly die. Mm -hmm. um, Travis is a little bit unique from a lot of people that go into organics in terms of going all in. But a lot of the folks that we work with are a little bit more like Rusty. Um, more more rational. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, maybe 200 acres at a time and yeah. things like that. But even us, I mean, transform, transferring our acres has taken 10 years. Mm -hmm. And we, didn't, we started off at 500 acres a bit. Um, it's an investment in the long term. But if you don't start making that investment today, you're never going to get to a point where you actually have some control over what you're doing. Um, so 
that said, it's not for everybody. I mean, it is hard work. Um, we like to joke that uh, the way that you can raise money to buy equipment is sell the boat in the lake house because you're not going to need them. Uh, <laughs> um, I, and, and, and it is, but it takes a different mindset of somebody that's willing to be invest in the future. And it's not easy. It's not like a you know big pile of cash sitting at the end of the rainbow. It's it's going to work. It's going to be a lot of work. But um, yeah, we we just feel that if you, if you're willing to think differently, you're willing to. Uh, you know, make an investment for the future to get into a different model, then there, there's no better time than the present to get started. And, and look at the tools that you have in front of you. In, in my situation, we have a lot of hog manure. It fit the bill. It, it, to me, it made perfect sense to be able to incorporate into something to put value into that manure. I've got it on the farm. I don't have to, I, I apply it myself. So everything kind of fell into place to make this work for me. And I'm, you know, I'm going to make mistakes. I know I'm going to make mistakes. I've already made enough. In the first year I made mistakes, you know, but uh, I, I can also tell you I had some great successes and uh, I'm looking forward to doing it next year. I did have a friend here a week ago, exactly what you're talking about is, uh, well, it's just not a good time to change. And he said, you're, you're doing this wrong, Rusty. He said, think about Varsity Blues, stick to the playbook, stick to the basics. And I was just like, so we keep doing the same thing over and expect a different result. It's a definition I, of insanity. It is. <laughs> exactly. So why not shake it a little bit and see if something works? You, you have to take a chance. Yeah, and I guess, you know, kind of coming from our all-in philosophy, I don't think I'd recommend that because it's exhausting. You know, sort of the mental sort of when you're trying to go these, into, these bags a completely, and just show yeah, up into a completely <laughs> different direction. You know, that's a lot of learning on the fly, you know, and, and, and what I would just kind of like what Rusty was talking about, take an area that you're strong. You know, if you've got a small amount of pasture, break that up, try that. You know, you can do that with pretty low risk. You know, um, if you've got some alfalfa ground like JP had, break that up, try that, you know, and, and try to farm organic there and start small and start in your comfort. Like we were really good wheat growers conventionally. So wheat naturally, you know, I, I learned that there was pretty good markets for organic wheat and that's been kind of the mainstay and the focus of our business. And, and then I think you just, you really want to just build off that. I mean, there's no time like today. I mean, if your opportunity cost is, you know, a relatively low, low margin at the best case in your current operation, you know, and that's assuming we can control weather and we can control prices and we can control market disruptions, which we're really learning. I think, you know, the whole piece of humble pie is we can't. So there's a good time. Well, then we may as well try this now when this side of the business doesn't look real profitable. It's a good time to take a chance. And maybe you're doing the beginning of that little failing forward journey of yourself and you can compare it, you know, directly and easily. So. I don't know, that would be my advice. Absolutely, some great advice there. Thank you guys so much for joining us. This was, we could clearly have this conversation for hours and hours. You guys have been in a, in a boot camp of convincing other farmers that it's not crazy. Uh, so thank you so much for joining Just us. Really Just it. a little bit of crazy is okay. You, can <laughs> you gotta have a little bit of crazy. Yeah, that's right. Uh, wanna thank, thank you guys you. again. Thank Good you. luck with the rest thank of the you. conference. Hopefully you, Appreciate you know, get yeah. some converts, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> We've already gotten a couple. So. Awesome. Uh, well, we're back here on the live stream. Have a couple of shout outs for you guys. Uh, Pierre P. in France, welcome to the live stream. Hello, nice to see you. And Jordan Moss, who's just on Facebook. Where in the world, it's hard to say, but for sure on the Facebook. Coming up next, we're going to talk about practices, more about sustainability, kind of crops of the future. We're going to keep this conversation going. It's going to be really exciting in the last couple of hours here on the live stream. Uh, but until then, make sure you stay with us and we'll be right back.